Uh, the first thing is that uh, I don't know if anyone ever told you this. There's more anointing at the front. This, there's more anointing here. It's like um, you can, you guys at the back, you can meet with God, but this is where the the real like heavy anointing is, right at the front. So I'm going to give you a moment just to greet one another, and then I'm going to invite you just to consider, just maybe moving a bit further forward. You know, you, we can be together today. We don't have to be all spread out. Uh, so greet one another, uh, have a think about moving forward, and then we'll, we'll start into what we're looking at today. The, um, the AV team was suggesting that maybe they should move further forward. You always get this moment now where you've got some people who are, oh, no, I'm staying where I am. I'm, and then other people are just complying. They're moving forward. Um, right, okay. Um, yes, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, we're doing our next talk today in the series of Advent talks. And if you were here last week, you'll know that Advent um, is a time of preparation. It's a time of waiting. It's a time of preparing. And the church used it as a time to prepare, yes, for the remembering that Jesus came into the world at Christmas, uh, but also remembering that Jesus is going to come back. And so uh, we're in that time now where Jesus coming into the world, uh, the events that we celebrate through Advent and into Christmas is a historical fact that happened 2,000 years ago. But we're in that moment where we're also waiting for Jesus to return. He's going to come back. And so it's a good opportunity for us just to prepare ourselves and saying, Lord, I want to be ready. I used to laugh sometimes. People would get these T-shirts printed that said... Um, Jesus is coming back, look busy. Um, so I don't know if that's the most helpful approach. Uh, but we, what I want, uh, when, when Jesus comes back, whether it's in my lifetime or uh, you know, when, when he comes back, I, 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 want, I want to be able to say to him, I used the time that he gave me. I didn't just waste it, I used it. And for me, this is a time of just coming back to, okay, what is it God's asked me to do? Um, I want to draw closer to him. And, and, and we're going to look at a couple of things today. Really from, in, on the one hand, um, the story of the Magi, the wise men. Magi means a wise man, a wise person, someone who uh, was a sage, someone who uh, looked into matters, inquired. Uh, we're going to look at their story again, which we're going to be doing all the way through December. But then we're also going to pair that with a, a little bit of a look at one of the disciples, one of the apostles. And today we're looking at Andrew. Andrew doesn't get a lot of press. He doesn't get a big mention in the Bible. But I think this is a beautiful story in John chapter 1 where he introduces Peter to Jesus. We hear a lot about Peter in the New Testament and he wrote books in the New Testament. But Andrew was the one who introduced uh, Peter to Jesus and uh, the kind of questions we're looking at as we work our way through this series are things like, what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to follow Jesus over this season? How do we follow him together? And how do we help others into following Jesus? And uh, the, the two things that I want to pick up on, the two attributes or virtues that I want to pick up on today from the story of the Magi, from the example of Andrew, are seeking and trusting. And I'm starting with this premise in mind, that following Jesus always involves seeking and trusting. We find it in the story of the Magi, we find it in the story of Andrew, we'll come back to that in a minute. But let's first start by thinking about seeking. Now, 
I've got someone here today who, who does some seeking on a fairly regular basis, and I do it as well. So, Caleb, come on, come on up, because you're someone like me. Oh, you've got yeah. your binoculars. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, you, like me, what do we love? What do we love doing? Uh, we love watching birds. Yeah, we love watching birds. Some people think that's weird, but I love it. Um, and so we are kind of doing a form of seeking, aren't we? So um, what are some really good birds that you've seen? Have you seen any, like, uh, yeah. what, what, what are some of your favourites? Uh, so I saw a lesser yellow legs when I went to Norfolk a few years back. Uh, Say that again. A lesser yellow legs. I've never even heard of that, and I'm a <laughs> bird a watcher. I think you just made that up. L yeah, no, it's a migrant. Legs. It's a migrant from it's the migrant. US. So okay. And so it rarely ever comes here. So rarely ever coming. So when you saw that bird, was there like a whole gaggle of bird watchers with like huge telescopic lenses and things? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. Okay. Uh, they they have an app where they share like some of these sightings, and a friend of mine was out w um, doing some bird watching. He said a guy came in a suit. He'd been sat in his desk at his office in the city. Don't worry, Kayla, I'm going to come back to you. Okay, so that's going in your eyes. He, he was sat in his, on his desk in the office, and the message came through that they'd seen a, a such and such bird. He just left everything, jumped <laughs> in a taxi, went out into Kent or wherever it was, so that he could say that he'd seen that thing. Well, that's impressive. I've never even heard of that bird, so you, you've seen that. Any tips for how, how, how can we get to see... Uh, anyone here is interested, how can you get to see some really good birds? How can you get to see, like, rare birds and things like that? <laughs> What's helpful? Um, so helpful tips are, like, you just have to go walking quite a lot. And it's just over, like, marshland. That's the my favourite area. Because yeah. there are just so many birds. And then if you see twitchers, just go up to them and ask them. Yeah, yeah, I like doing that as well. I'm, I'm, um, I'm super excited. You should see me. I, I start like, what, there's all these people looking at something particular. I'm like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? And then I get the binoculars out. Okay, I've got something you, I'm going to ask you to help me with. You've got your binoculars. Can you see there's a sign on the door just over there? I wonder if you can manage to read what it says on the sign on the door. I hope I haven't printed it too small. I've got mine. I've got mine as well. We can <laughs> do this together. Anyway, this is going up on Instagram, isn't it? They're f f Ooh, it's quite. It's quite hard to see. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting that. But if 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 from there. You seek the Lord. Oh, I got better binoculars than you. Um, it is really hard to see. <laughs> you, let's let's help us out. Let's put the next slide up. <laughs> you will. I I help you out. It's on the screen here. Thank you, Caleb. Really helpful. Thank you. Better than that. Okay. Um, Caleb, I, I'm starting to hatch some plans for Caleb and me to go and do some bird watching. So if you're interested, you can let me know. But uh, that this is what it says on the sign with minute writing on the door. It says these words. It says, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, it's words from the Old Testament, from Deuteronomy, God saying to, to his people, if you, if you go away from me, if you worship idols, but then come back, this will be true. If from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So it's first it's like this, this idea gets repeated again and again. If you seek God with everything within you, and it's an active word, it's not a passive word. You don't see many birds, do you, Caleb, if you're just kind of looking down at the ground, just like hands in your pockets. You get active, you just go up to people, start asking them what they're looking at with their binoculars. You, 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 you move towards it and you, you're seeking. And this is the idea we find, that if we seek God in that way, we will find him. 
And I don't know, pro probably all of us have found that to be the case. We've all probably been through days or seasons of our life where we felt like we weren't really investing much energy in our relationship with God. We weren't really looking for him. But then we can think of other times where actually we were really seeking him and we really felt him speaking to us closely. I remember when, at City Gates Church when I was like student and then young professional, uh, we used to do times, seasons of fasting. And sometimes we would fast for a week. And uh, during those times, I remember I would go into work. My, my work colleagues thought I was like, just really quiet and really, I don't know, I think they thought I hadn't been sleeping well or something because I just didn't have so much energy. Uh, but I, I would go into the park at, at lunchtime, I'd be praying, I'd be seeking God because I really wanted to hear what God was saying to the church. And I haven't done that so much recently. I find it hard, if I'm honest, to fast and to pray. But I think we can all relate to the idea that there are times where we're really seeking God really beginning to hear him speaking to us, and it's exciting, and it, it helps us to, to, to follow him. We find that, of course, in the story of the Magi, don't we? We find that uh, the Magi were actively seeking God. They were reading the stars, and we wouldn't encourage anybody here to do that, to look at the stars for guidance. People do it. They read their horoscopes in the newspapers, don't they, to try and tell them, what's going to happen in the future, whether their love interest is, is going to materialize and all those kind of things. But what we do believe is that God can speak in some really unlikely places, don't we? God speaks to people in prison. You know, they reflect on their life, they hear God speak and they have a dramatic conversion experience. We don't encourage people to get arrested and go to prison. But the point is God can speak through that. And God can speak, of course, through nature through birds, through stars, through his creation. And the Magi saw the star, interpreted it about the coming of a king, and then did something about it, didn't they? They got active. They packed their bags, they got on their camel, and, and they went for miles and miles to, to follow. And... Um, not only that, but a bit like Caleb with the bird watching, when they got to Jerusalem, do you, do you remember in the story? They need help. They're trying to find the king. They're not interested in the general idea of where roughly the king is. They want to find the king so that they can worship him. So they go and ask. And that word that Herod says in verse 8 when he says, go and seek him out, go and seek him out, means to search, to inquire. It's an active word. It means keep looking until you find it. And then we go on to read, don't we, that when they find uh, the, the star over the place where the child was, they're rejoicing. They're so glad. There's always that element we're seeking where there's that question mark in our mind. Am I going to find what I'm looking for? And if I'm concerned that I'm not going to find it, maybe I should lower my expectations. There's always that tension whenever we're seeking for something. You lost something, lost a coin, lost your keys. There's always that thing of, should I keep looking a bit more, a bit more, I'm getting late for work now, but I think I'm going to find it. There's that thing going on, and there's that, that happens when we're seeking. But we have that promise, don't we, that those who will seek the Lord will find him. We could think as well about the story of Andrew. Andrew gets described as someone who's seeking. Do you remember? He says to Peter, we found the one, the Messiah. We've been seeking, the one we've been seeking, the one we've been looking for, the one we've been waiting for, the one all Israel has been waiting for. We think we found him. Simon Peter at that point, he's, he's oblivious. He's not, he's not looking. He's fishing and doing whatever else he's doing. But he's got his brother and other friends in Bethsaida telling him, about Jesus. Andrew was someone who was clearly watching Jesus carefully. And as he watched, it persuaded him that he was the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the Christ, the King. And Andrew went on to help his brother, Peter, to seek Jesus. And then they both became apostles, didn't they? Followers of Jesus. What do we learn 
from these stories? Well, I think we learn a few things. I think we learn that seeking Jesus is never a futile activity. It's never a waste of time. Sometimes feel, uh, if I'm honest, I often feel in times of fasting that I, I, I quite rarely hear clearly from God. But afterwards, it's like something clicks and I start getting a sense of direction and I feel like I'm hearing God speaking. But even if God doesn't speak, it's never a futile exercise. Seeking God, bringing our heart in tune with his, is always productive. Seeking requires activity. And I guess that begs the question, how badly do we want to encounter Jesus during this season? How badly do we want that? If we really want it badly, then we'll do something about it. But if we're not really that bothered, then we probably won't. There are often opportunities for us to help others to explore and find Jesus. Just like Andrew helping his brother Peter. What a lovely thing when families, whole families come to the Lord. We had the the great privilege a while back of baptizing a whole family who we'd been reaching out to uh, f- for Jesus. How lovely that Peter, Andrew, reaches out to his brother Peter and helps him to explore. And then lastly, what stops us seeking? What is it actually that stops us? We're all sat here today and we're all like, yeah, this sounds good. Yeah, I should do this. But let's revisit the same question on Wednesday. Thursday. What is it that stops us? Is it busyness? Is it having a comfortable life? Comfortable faith? Is it the emotions to do with our expectations or sense of not hearing God? Frustration about that? Let's bring those ideas to the Lord because he wants us to seek him during this time. Okay, let's go on to think about trusting. Trusting. Now, I've got another illustration. See, the teenagers in the church, like, Robin, you need more, like, preaching illustrations. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to be creative. Um, can I have a couple of volunteers? April's looking at me like, you dare even look in my direction. Don't worry, April. I'm not going to choose it. Okay, Joshua, maybe one other? I mean, just should be fine. You'll be fine. Right. D- let me ask you a question. You're, I've pointed and you're about to kind of sit down because you, 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 you know you're a volunteer and I'm going to ask you to do something. Do you trust if you sit down on that chair, it's going to support you? Okay, go for it. Yeah, not fallen down, not had any serious injury. Yeah, no. Okay, right, up you get that. You thought that was easy, didn't you? What about, maybe Shidden can help me with this, what about on a chair that I've just made this morning? (laughs) Um, We've had a couple of deliveries, and I studied history of art, so I know what I'm doing. Um, I'll come around the front. Actually, should should we put a cushion down, just to, in case this all goes, in case this all goes pear shaped Right, Shidden, can you just hold that side? You hold that side. Right, if this goes horribly wrong, just your mum's there watching it all unfold, so uh, maybe just hold your hand out and grab me, yeah? Right, let's try this. Oh! Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. Right, okay, I need to go back to the drawing board. All right. <laughs> Joshua's now wondering what comes next. Don't worry, that's it. <laughs> Joshua, you can go and sit down. <laughs> that's a rubbish chair. Uh, I give you a challenge, Joshua, to try and design a better one. Come back with it next week, and maybe I should try it out, all right? Um, what's that all got to do with trusting? Well, it's a simple idea, really, that we don't even think about. But when we sit down on a chair, we're trusting that it's going gonna, it's gonna to carry our weight. Anyone know who this is on the screen? 
No, you probably don't. <coughs> it does look like Charles Darwin, doesn't it? I think they all had that kind of beard and the kind of somber look when they took photos. This is... <coughs> Any other suggestions? No. This is John Gibson Patton. Okay, he was born in 1824 and he died in 1907. There's no real reason why you should know him. But uh, he was a missionary. He was a missionary to the South Pacific and in particular to these islands here. Anyone got any idea which islands those are? Virgin Islands. Solomon Islands. Okay, it's the Hebridean, Hebride, uh, what is it? The New Hebrides, New Hebrides Islands. Tribes were living there, they were cannibals. Okay, so there was a problem straight away with trust. <laughs> because if you think about it, everyone is a potential, <laughs> a potential meal, and everyone is a potential predator in that environment. So they had issues with trust. And this guy, John Patton, uh, he went there to tell the people about Jesus. And it's very hard to get very far into the story about Jesus and following Jesus until you get to that idea of trust, faith. Put your trust in Jesus is usually what missionaries are telling people to do. So he had a challenge because they didn't have anything in their vocabulary to describe that word trust. And um, he decided that, okay, I need to tackle this, but I need to be creative in how to do it. And on one particular occasion, he was in his office and he was sitting on his chair. And some, one of the tribes people came in. He said, what's it I'm doing now? And told him in their language, sitting on his chair. He then leant back, so he was on two legs. He said, what is it I'm doing now? And the guy told him, and that was the word that he used in the translation of the Bible that he was using with the people he was reaching out to. That idea of leaning back, putting all your weight in this instance on a chair, but that's what we're doing if we really trust a person or if we really trust God. We're saying, I'm actually, I'm going to put my whole weight on it. Joshua was taking his life in his hands and I'm very pleased it didn't go completely catastrophically wrong because you've got your whole family sat there watching like I'm probably going to be out of a job but that's what you do and that's what it is with God it, he invites us to go deeper with him and each step is like okay am I going to put all my weight on this am I going to rest all of my beliefs my life you start getting that point you get involved in a church you start being invited to give money on a regular basis, to use your time, your resources. I wouldn't do any of that unless I was persuaded of the validity of what I believe, that it's making a difference, that there is a king who was born in a manger, who's actually the king of kings and the lord of lords. And if we believe that, that place of trust is what we live our lives out of. Think about the uh, Magi. Think about the level of trust they had to have. They were probably coming from Arabia, as Cecilia was saying last week. All the church fathers, people like Clement, Justin, Martyr, all described the, the Magi as coming from Arabia. There's actually a tribe, interestingly enough, Ken Bailey talks about a tribe in, uh, I don't know if it's Saudi Arabia, but somewhere in that vicinity, that actually their claim to fame is, from a Muslim perspective, that they were the tribe that followed the star and found the prophet Jesus, because Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet. Interesting, isn't it? But anyway, they trusted enough to leave everything and travel hundreds of miles. If they hadn't trusted, they would have never got going there wouldn't be this story in the Bible. They trusted enough to then go and make inquiries in Jerusalem. It's always slightly awkward, isn't it, when you go up to a stranger asking them for directions or help? 
But they, they, they wanted to find the king. They knew that there was a king, and they were trying to find him. They, they trusted, and they acted out of that trust. They trusted that all the work, that all the effort, that all the financial implications, leaving their family, friends, the creature comforts from home, would be worth it. And interestingly, in the Old Testament, I think it's in Isaiah 60, it prophesies the nations coming to Jerusalem and from places like Arabia, coming and bringing their treasures, bringing gifts. Arabia is also the part of the world where you grow things like frankincense, myrrh, those spices grow. Came and brought them. But what Matthew is saying is actually the expectation before was this was for Jerusalem. But it's actually for Jesus, the true Israel. They bring this to Jesus. All that expectation which had, had yet to be realized became realized in the person of Jesus. Their trust was vindicated. They trusted that a child was actually the king of kings. Our trust in Jesus can go up and down. It's a bit like seeking. There are times in our life where we feel like I was really seeking God. I feel like that with trust. Smith Wigglesworth is kind of a funny character, comes out with some interesting things, but he said on one occasion, great faith is born out of great faith battles. And actually for me, uh, it'd be interesting to hear some of your stories. My trust in God has grown in those places where it's been tested. I've told the story before, but when Cecilia and I, when we started the, the church, we, we, it came out of the fact that we'd moved to a particular flat on the Dover Court Estate. And I'd gone down to part-time in work so that I had more time available to work with the church. And we had a lovely two-bedroom flat. But I had this idea that got into my head, and it? God had never said that, that that was going to be me for the rest of my life. Even if I grew a family, we would just be stuck in this two-bedroom flat because I thought I'm making this sacrifice. But actually what happened was, one day I was door knocking around the estate telling people about the church, and someone in one of the other flats said, well, that's really interesting. You should come and look around our flat because we want to sell it. So Sin and I said, well, well, I said, well, I better not tell my wife about that. Otherwise, she'll want to come and look around. We haven't got the money to, to buy a, a flat or what, what have you. Anyway, they said, no, no, you must come anyway. Come and, come and look around. So I went with Cecilia. We looked around this flat. It had three bedrooms. had a garden. It's like, well, it's a lovely flat. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great to live here. But we haven't got that kind of resource. What I wanted to say was all that whole story, I've gone part-time, I'm serving God, you know, we're making sacrifices. The family was so keen on selling the house to us. They said we... That we had to persuade them to get the estate agency and to value the property. So they did that. They said, well, we're, we're happy to receive the lowest price of the three offers. We said, well, we'd love to give you the lowest offer, but we haven't even got that. I tell you, they said, well, tell us what you've got. We said, well, at a stretch, we can do this. They said, all right, we'll accept that. So uh, Amazing. We then went through the whole process of uh, we didn't speak anything to anyone. Someone gave us an anonymous gift of money that was just what we needed to be able to, to buy it. We hadn't asked anyone for any money. It just came in. We then had the house that we were selling. People kicked up a fuss right at the last minute, got someone to go and do a survey and said there's an extra £5,000 worth of work that needs to be done on the house. We ended up going back to the people who were buying this property with and said, we're really sorry, but the whole chain's going to collapse and you've been so good to us all the way through. The only thing we can think is if we can pass that £5,000 down the line. So they said, okay, we'll accept 5000 less and we'll offer 5000 less on the property we're buying. The people at their end said, yes, that's okay, we'll go ahead with it. And the whole sale went through. It's just one thing after the other. When you go through things like that, 
let me tell you, you come out of you like, I really trust God. Because it was completely out of my control. I couldn't conjure that up, but God came through. And you, I'm sure, will have stories that are similar to that. Times, I know some of you have heard some of your stories. Times where you were trying to trust God, but it looked like the situation was, was messy, was not going to work out. But you, you tried to pray, you tried to have faith in God. You, you Sometimes that went better than at other times. But ultimately, God came through. Seeking and trusting is always part of following Jesus. Let's just take a moment. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back. Let's just consider for a moment what can help us to seek Jesus and what can help us to trust in him this Advent and this Christmas. And then I want to encourage you just to share with someone. Just You don't have to share with loads of people. Just, just someone you know in the church. Why don't you say, look, this is what I'm thinking of trying to do to really seek God and trust him this month. If you do that, I think you're far more likely to follow through on what you're saying you'll do. And I think it's going to be helpful for you. But it's up to you. That's, that's just my suggestion. One thing I have found that um, I've done in previous years is the Church of England, they're, 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 they're hearing from God. Follow the Star is the Church of England nationwide has gone with that as their theme for Christmas this year. And they've actually got an app that you can download. If you put follow the star in your phone, searching for an app to download, you can download the app with reflections for this season based on this thing. And one of the things, because I li listened to it yesterday, I thought if I'm going to encourage people to do it, I better go, go on it myself and listen to it. So I went on it yesterday, and they were encouraging people just to, this evening, make a point of looking at, at the sky and trying to see if we if there's no cloud cover, see if there's any stars that you can see. And then just bring that back to God in prayer. Follow the star. You can download the app. It'll give you reflections for this season. Let's pray. As I've been speaking, you might have felt like, actually, the one I really need to focus on is, see is seeking. Or actually, the one I, I really need to focus on is trusting. There can be any number of things that can make it hard for us to either seek or to trust God. But both of those things, seeking and trusting, are beautiful qualities, beautiful virtues that God absolutely loves and that are life-giving for us as men and women of faith. So Lord, we just say, Jesus, we want to be people who seek you. Even if we've been Christians years and years, we don't want to just settle for what we've got. We want to, we want to explore the adventure of finding out more and learning more and knowing you more. Jesus, help us to see how we can seek after you. Help us to have that attitude in our heart of wanting to seek you. Lord, when it comes to trust, we find it so hard to trust. But Lord, we want to grow in our trust for you. Help our faith to grow during this season. And the things that we find hard, the things that are difficult, help us to be people who pray and see you working in our lives, working in those situations. Help those to become situations that, that develop our faith. Lord, we thank you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You're the only king who put down your, your crown and came into a manger, humbled yourself to come, and we're so grateful. Thank you for that invitation this Christmas to come and follow you. In Jesus' name, amen.